So what's happening is that um, in the stratosphere, which is about 30 kilometers from the ground, so pretty high up over Antarctica, the air is warming by, as you said, about 30 degrees, so it's much warmer than usual. Um, but it's maybe important to say here that it, this is really up in the, in the atmosphere, 30 mm -hmm. kilometers, so it's not going to melt the ice of Antarctica or anything like that. But what it does do is that it, this warming slowly uh, makes its way down to where we live, to, to the surface, and can, as you said, disrupt weather systems. And, and it might change what we thought the, the weather ahead is going to be. Okay, why is it happening? Oh, yeah, so there's, uh, it's actually a good question. Um, so it's something that happens very ra rarely. We've only had this happening in 2002 and 2019. And the, the reason for these things to happen is that you have very strong perturbations uh, in the atmosphere which travel upward all the way to these 30 kilometer height and then they can interact with the winds which are up there, just very strong winds and it's very cold usually in the winter and, and when they interact they can warm up and slow down the winds and this then can come down. Um, this happens pretty slowly, once it happens the way to influence the surface is pretty slowly which is why we think this has impacts mm. weeks to months to come. You mentioned it's rare, um, happened twice uh, in recent memory. Um, what was the impact then on Australia? So the, the most recent one, 2019, was, was a really uh, strong one. And there has been research coming out of the Bureau of Meteorology uh, from colleagues who linked it to the Black Summer fires. So it's not to say that the fires were caused by this, it's just the fires would have been there anyway, but we think that it made the fires worse and potentially extended also their duration. Um, and a similar thing happened in 2002 as well. Um, those fires weren't as, as strong as the Black Summer, but they were also fires which could have been influenced by, by such an event. Okay, interesting. Uh, am I right in, in saying that we are actually having a period of very weird weather. Yeah, that's correct. So this situation is pretty different. I mean, it's, it's very different actually to 2019 where we had three years of drought before the event. Whereas now we've had, I think, the six um, wettest years on record uh, in some parts of the country uh, on the East Coast. And um, so that's very different. So it is now very wet and the Bureau of Meteorology's seasonal forecasts have consistently called for wetter and warmer uh, weather but so the effect of this could still be that it's drying out a bit so it might be less wet or not but I think it's really something um, there's so many things happening at the same time and the weather has been so weird for the last one to two years um, that it's really difficult to, to say what exactly it, it, it will what exactly will happen with our weather. And given that, Martin, how important is it to observe, to log, to collect data from these events? Oh yes, that's, that's absolutely crucial. All of the observations, uh, the measurements, everything we can do, that goes into uh, forecasting systems. So these are very good models of the atmosphere and the ocean and the land, but they need to run from as much of the actual state that we are in right now to then have accurate forecasts. And if we don't accurately observe the weather now, it is that much more difficult to predict the weather uh, ahead.